Do you recognise that sound yet? This is Andrew from the Beat Motel podcast. And that's the sound of my front door opening, then closing, with me now on the outside of it. (coughs) So after a little bit of coughing, that means this is a live review. And today we are off to Norwich Arts Centre to see Max Cooper's 3D AV. Just got to pick up friend James, who you've met before. He was my travelling buddy on the Anderson Sod Jockey review. So there you go, cool kids. We are off. We've arrived at Norwich Arts Centre now. Hello, James. Hello. And uh, they're doing a food drop-off, or food bank drop-off, which I always think is a cool thing to see at a gig. And we left them some deodorant and some... What did you leave? Um, a Kellogg's variety pack and a pot noodle. Well, yeah, there's a reason for the pot noodle. What's that, James? Um, it's, uh, I'm infamous for using one as an instrument. There you go. If you want to find out more about that, just uh, go look it up. <laughs> Talking sleeves, the thing to look up. Um, Norwich Arts Centre is just another venue locally that was a big part of my childhood and my youth. I remember being here sometime around 1992 or 93 to see a band called Prolapse who are on Cherry Red, who I really liked. And it was the night they got dropped from the label. And in the corner of the, the upstairs bit of the bar, there was these teenagers, about 15 or 16, all gathered around a tiny little bottle of vodka. So I went over to speak to them. They had very thick Welsh accents, and it turns out it was Gorky Zygotic Monkey. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. yeah. That's applause for someone we were told of, Alex James. Sorry? But I don't think it was the uh, Tory cheesemaker. Can't actually tell if his set's finished or not. Oh, he shut his laptop. Oh, look, there's Ableton. <laughs> that's quite smart. All re- his secrets revealed. Yep, I can see that. God, that's a hell of a complex set. He's got, well, on scene, on screen, I can see maybe 30 scenes in Ableton across, well, there's a scroll bar at the bottom, about 40 tracks. Anyway, that, that was cool. I never quite knew where it was going to go. Um, a few technical problems, which I felt no one would likes to see. Uh, felt a bit bad for him kind of glitchy what would you, how do you describe that um yeah i mean the technical problems are a bit obvious um i found it quite ravey in places but he seemed he seemed to be doing bits with a chaos pad to kind of deliberately screw it up at times as well uh, which i enjoyed yeah i like that i like the kind of glitchy thing i thought it was quite playful actually it started off quite simple uh, kind of the, the the bass sort of sub bass thing was almost drum and bass in some parts it's as much of a character of the sound as anything else yeah 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 i'd agree with that and, and overall, it's always nice to see an electronic act, uh, you know, whilst we can see there was Ableton involved. There was also a decent array of hardware as well, so there was a hands-on aspect to the performance. Well, he was having to work at it. It was also, I actually saw people dancing. Mm. People were actually kind of boogieing around. It's a slightly strange thing to point out about the stage. There's a massive net in front of it, like a big electronic wedding is about to happen or something. Uh, yeah, that, that's going to be for um, Max Cooper's visuals. Um, I don't think he really wants people to look at him, so he um, provides his own treats for the eyes. Well, now I want to know what he looks like. Um, just like some guy. Oh, some guy. <laughs> I've seen them before. <laughs> I realise for a lot of these Beat Motel live reviews, I end up doing a bit of a homage to the venue, and uh, with good cause. And Norwich Arts Centre is going to be no exception. It's another medieval church, and yet the sound is somehow perfect. I genuinely don't know how, because unlike some other church venues like Colchester Art Centre, which hangs up big, heavy bits of material, there's just bare medieval stone walls here, but the sound is absolutely exceptional. The bass is wonderful. And I'm giving these little homages to the venues because I think they're really, really brilliant. (laughs) I was trying to not use superfluous language and not swear then, but they need our support. And uh, this sold out tonight, so it looks like it's getting support. Nice one, Norwich and surrounding places. In the foyer of uh, Norwich Arts Centre, there's a blue plaque that's presented by BBC Music Day. And it says about when you know, Norwich Arts Centre launched in 1980. As, I'll read it, shall I? That'll be easier. Norwich Arts Centre. Since 1980, Norwich Arts Centre continues to be a launch pad for new artists having staged early gigs from Nirvana, the Stone Roses, Ed Sheeran, Savages and K Tempest, awarded by BBC Radio Supper from the British Clark Trust. Now, the cool thing is Kate Tempest, clearly used to say Kate Tempest, but they've uh, coloured in the E, updating it to K Tempest, which I think is kind of cool. I'm on, I'm on that. That's eight, that's, I'm losing my words, so I'm going to stop recording. I've just looked up who the support is, and it's Alex Banks. Not Alex James, so 
whoever it was we were speaking to in the garden was wrong. Alex Jones. Hang on, is that right? No, Alex Banks. Oh, good God, right. Alex Banks, Alex Banks, Alex Banks. I've just seen a bunch of people I recognise from the Swans gig in Norwich a few weeks ago. It seems like not really the same <laughs> sort of common ground, Swans and Max Cooper. But I'm pleased to see uh, we're not the only freaks who have a very broad taste in music. was for Max Cooper. I had a leaning pillar for a little while, then I realised I was blocking people's view, then I realised that because there was projectors everywhere, I wasn't really blocking anyone's view. <laughs> right, so little over, that was quite overwhelming in parts. Um, the, the stage setup was, I counted five massive projectors. Um, yes, uh, yeah, I think we had back mesh at the front, um, two sides, and what was the other one you spotted? There was one on stage. One on stage, sort of yeah. behind the mesh, so that it was, and they were all doing something different, but the music's brilliant. I mean, I've never heard, I must have heard Max Cooper on Six Music or something, but absolutely fantastic, really good, constantly evolving, didn't kind of get repetitive, and as you just said, a two hour set, mm. which I think slightly too long. For, for me, <laughs> I think it's fine. The rival consoles was two and a half hours, but that was sitting down at the Barbican. Yeah. And uh, but at least for this one, I haven't had to worry about kind of rushing to get the last train back from London. But yes, yeah, so some of the visual, the visuals are absolutely remarkable. Kind of well used to seeing good visuals, but the, like the thought and the detail put into. Yeah, I think it was even like lining up the projector, which I think was coming from the back of the venue onto the mesh at the front of the stage. That had been positioned and zoomed and whatever so that the edges hit the pillars of yeah. the building. Absolutely amazing. The bits where, where figures, numbers were going up, it was counting from one upwards. Yeah, and, go, and it started off going down a pillar. Yeah, absolutely incredible. But some of it was... I said to you during it, it's one of the most overwhelming things I've seen visually and, and sonically since I first saw Ryan Jordan. Mm. Because one of the most challenging parts of it is, I'm used to seeing like geometric shapes and it all started off very organic. They were kind of butterflies, I think, and like flowers growing and then like cell organism things. And they're all doing something, it wasn't mm. just random stuff. But when the music was getting really intense and there was words on the screen yes I, that's the only time at the gig i had to actually shut my eyes and look away because <laughs> i was trying to read them there's five projectors filling the entire room and the words were clear enough to read and mm. I, I can anyone see words without your brain automatically trying to read them that's it you try and keep up with it um and um it's probably probably worth me mentioning as someone who saw him in the same venue two years ago the words bit was the only thing I saw duplicated. So, oh, we had, wow, so, really? so we had two hours tonight where, for me, it was full of surprises still. Um, also, I would say you mentioned things like Six Music. That's how I found him in the first place. I think for a lot of people, the gateway is, is more ambient sounding stuff mm. and um the set that he did two years ago leaned a lot more in in that direction also he segued anything everything so um you know there was only like a little clap after the main set just before an encore started i think he's now realized that he's really good at what he does <laughs> so he was deliberately leaving in sections for wild applause i he thought he, he was a cheeky chappy because it kind of from about an hour and a quarter in, that's already a long set, yeah. that sort of thing. So he'd stop and he'd do this, like, you know, sort of clapping hands in the air thing and everyone would cheer. And I was, like, thinking, oh, right, I was trying to record the last bit of applause. Like, all oh, right, this this must be it. Mm. Then he started up again. Yeah, I mean, the, the first hour was pretty much the gentle stuff. And then he totally threw us by doing 15 minutes of quite mutant drum and bass. Yeah, no, that was brilliant. And even with the, like, the the um dubstep kind of da, 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 da. Yeah. yes yeah that's it that reminded me of the um the sound you get in getting a bit geeky here in um the legend of zelda twilight princess <laughs> when the demon type creatures appear there's that kind of hideous like synth it's it's like the worst attempt at synthesizing a horn <laughs> 
Uh, quite brilliant. There was um, not quite a cover, but there was very much the uh, lead 303 bit from Josh Wink High State. I, th- I, thought, I thought exactly the same thing, and I thought that was a lovely way to bring it towards the close, which still took another 10 minutes in itself to kind of bring everyone back down from the journey. But yeah, yeah, the homage to Josh Wink um, came at the end of a, a pretty solid 30 minutes of techno. It, it was brilliant. I was thinking, you, you were talking earlier about it being IDM, which is what, intelligent dance music? Yeah. I've decided it's it better off as PhDM. Yes, yeah, because I believe he does hold two doctorates, God, which, mean, which means we've literally seen a scientist at work. We've gone to see a doctor. Yes. I, I don't want an apple a day anymore. <laughs> I don't want to keep the doctor away. I mean, I certainly can't imagine that anything better happening in a church on a Sunday. <laughs> What a brilliant conclusion. Um, I was going to say, that I mentioned earlier on this recording about the sound being so good and there not being the black drapes that you get at like Colchester Arts Centre. Yeah. But I think the church may have been the best place to experience the, the all the projectors and everything because it's all white walls. Yes. Absolutely brilliant. But so many people dancing and lady fell over like I did at a gig a little while ago. So... I, I helped her back up, bless her, and tried to reassure her that it was a normal thing. It, it was an older crowd overall than when I saw him a couple of years <laughs> it was ago. Like, like you said, like someone had a fall. Well, she did, I suppose. Yeah, <laughs> no, but... yeah and, and I don't mean older in that I saw him two years ago and everyone who came along tonight was two years older than the last <laughs> time. Um, it was generally, it, it, I like it when I go to gigs and see people who are obviously older than me, not because it means I don't feel like everyone's dad. <laughs> um, but I, you know, I've got respect for anyone who can go into their fifties and sixties and still be on that that path to discover new music and support it. I, I wholly agree. I hope it never stops. That that's one of the best gigs I have ever seen in my life. Yeah, on, on uh, so many levels. Yeah, I mean, there, there's a lot to process. Actually, I mean, we're literally minutes after walking out of the venue. But I think a good sign of a, a gig, and you've mentioned it's both visually and sonically in Max Cooper's case, is the amount of moments I had where I totally lost that I was in a venue with a bunch of other people. I, I, no, I totally got lost, and I, I felt some of the graphics, I started to feel, were you ever like delirious when you were a kid and you got ill? No, no. So um, I've, I've never done done drugs like that, and... That's the nearest thing I remember to being delirious, where it's just, <laughs> it's so intense. I, w- I would not, I'm completely sober, I'm driving. But man, I'm, I'm, I want to go again. I mean, it, it, it was really hot in there, as mentioned, and I seem to have been blessed in life with having a thermostat that's a few degrees off everyone else's anyway. So, you know, it'll get to December and people are getting the big coats out and I'll be walking around in a T-shirt going, this is refreshing. It's because you've got a big warm heart, James. But, but there, again, there were moments in the gig where I just felt so in the zone and, you know, literally for being probably the hottest person in the room, the goosebumps were in full force. Oh, amazing. Right, we'd better drive back to Ipswich. Um, if I can just remember how to walk... Oh, how do cars work? Ah, oh, right, power button. All right, if it had an Xbox controller, I could drive it. Oh, it's only two pedals. One makes it go, one makes it stop. The round thing just stops you going off the road. Yeah, I even managed to break a go-kart once. <laughs> Story for another time. Anyway, thanks, thanks for that, James. Um, are you promoting anything at the moment? Uh, not really. No, I'm. I, it's all a recording project at the moment. Where pe- I'm going to shock people by actually making music that's nice. <laughs> right. I'll put a link to your Bandcamp in the, uh, in the show notes. Uh, yeah, so, yeah. yeah, certainly. Uh, I mean, some there is some nice bits on the Bandcamp at the moment, but this is going to be the first album where I've written it from a keyboard player perspective rather than a "Isn't it great? All these gadgets do things for me" perspective. <laughs> Brilliant. Right. Cheers, then. Thanks for listening, everyone. Subscribe and all that shit.